So far we've talked about linear polarization. That's polarization where the E field just moves across a line. And also in every case we had the phase equal to zero. Sometimes that's because we just had one component on the X or the Y. And if you just have one component, there's no reason to worry about phase. You just set the origin of time to be zero wherever you want. And in the other case, when it was at some angle alpha, there were two components and we kind of argued, well, they have to be in phase to make it do what we want, to make it be linear. So if they had to be in phase, their phases were equal, make it zero. Now, finally, we're gonna do something more interesting. And we're going to say, what if our delta phase, phase difference, which we'll define as phi x, minus phi y, what if it equals something other than zero? For instance, what if it equals pi over two? 90 degrees, the difference between a sine and a cosine. That would look something like this. So here, if you're imagining, if you imagine we're using cosines to describe the plane waves, then the x component, the horizontal component, um, has phase of zero, because it's a cosine with a maximum amplitude at time equals zero. So that's a zero phase cosine. And then this, uh, looks more like a sine because it's zero at time equals zero, so this must be phase shifted from the cosine by pi over two. So it looks something like this, and if we let them go, you can watch it go and say, okay, I better watch that again. This one does what it did, this one did what that did, but they're not in phase now. They're kind of doing it. Let me do that again. Let me see if I can. Uh, yes, they do something like that. So you can see what's happening maybe a little better if I put them on top of each other, All right? So now here our cosine is big, amplitude, our, um, <coughs> our vertical component uh, you don't see yet because it's at zero. So we watch it go and we see what is it going to do and it does that. And we watch it again and it does that. And then you see what if we tried to keep up with this summed vector? What is it going to do? Let's see. Uh, it's gonna go around. See the maximum, whoops, uh, will go around. Whoa, like that. So this is circularly polarized light, and we could look at it like this. That's what it's really doing. So if you take those two simple sinusoids, put them out of phase by pi over two, then the E field goes around in a circle, and this is called uh, circular polarization. And it is kind of significant because remember when we first talked about polarization, we said that if you're out in empty space, the polarization doesn't really matter because we were thinking of linear polarization. And if it's along X and you want to think of it as along Y, you just turn your head sideways. It was all really the same. That's actually not true. So the light can physically do something different, even in empty space, nothing to do with hitting an interface or a material. Instead of oscillating up and down, the E vector can spin through space. Mathematically, it's actually the same thing. It's just a difference of pi over two. But if you think physically in terms of the vector, it's actually rotating. So the polarization state does actually matter, even independent of any surfaces or interfaces you might hit. Um, so next we'll look at how we describe this mathematically.